Our study today is a short one and is based upon only six verses, 30 to 35 at the end of Joshua chapter 8. But if you can open your Bibles at them, you will see they're not to be missed. We noted earlier in our studies that these verses conclude a section that commenced at 5 verse 1, and the section comes to a close with a fitting climax. Shechem, though not mentioned here, was in the locality of Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, and was about 20 miles from Ai, a couple of days' walk. While some speculate that this was undertaken as a sort of tactical retreat for military reasons, it seems preferable to see the choices dictated by religious factors. In fact, it was near this city that Abraham had first received the promise of the land in Genesis chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, and where Jacob had been restored from a period of backsliding and had buried the family gods in Genesis chapters 33 and 34. What better choice of location for the people who had lived to see these promises fulfilled and themselves needed to openly recognise their recent failures and the call to abandon all for the Lord. Above all, however, the Lord had in Deuteronomy 27 commanded through Moses what takes place here and Israel is anxious to be faithful. Knowing our author by now, we're not surprised that his language is saturated with scripture. Thus the altar, after the model given in Exodus 20 to 20, 20 verse 24, is set up, and the sacrifices that accompanied the covenant ceremony of Sinai are offered. Indeed, the whole account is something of a repetition of Sinai, and such an altar was designed to celebrate the fact that grace reigns through righteousness. This is emphasised by the different offerings referred to in verse 31. The burnt offerings were a substitutionary offering to God on behalf of sinners. The fellowship offerings celebrated friendship with the Lord. Here then at the Lord's dining table the family are reconciled and able to enjoy a meal together. But those thus reconciled must listen to Father God. Thus the law was copied on what were probably plastered pillars and all the words of the law, including the blessings and the curses, were read to the entire community, including, as we are told, women, children and the aliens. In other words, those ethnically non-Israelite members of the community. Thus, after the initial skirmishes in the land and the positive and negative lessons that the people have learned, this is reinforced by the covenant renewal ceremony. Israel is reminded that there is no God like theirs, one who is full of grace, faithful to his promises, and embraces his people as his family. At the same time, they're reminded that one of the privileges of family life is discipline, and their Father God is holy and seeks holiness in his people, a holiness demonstrated in their wholehearted obedience to his word, and from all of them, and to each and every word.